Hi, it's Rachel from Twinkle and I've just been having a chat with um, a wonderful photographer I know, my husband, and he's just shared with me some tips, three main tips to help us take better photos, especially if you're taking pictures in nature. So listen up to our conversation and see what you can learn. Number one is think in 3D. Okay, I like this photo. The flower looks really bright and colourful. Um, how would you improve this? Think about being in 3D so it's not a flat picture. Absolutely. So uh, what we're dealing with here is we, we have three sections of every photo. We've got the background, which is right here. It's all blurry. We've got the subject, which is right here. It's what's in focus. Um, and then what this photo lacks is something called the foreground. And that's something in between you and the subject. So often it'll still be blurry. It might not be in focus. Um, but, uh, you know, at the moment you look at this and the photo might not look bad, but there's just all this empty space. And if we had yeah. something here that was in between us and the flower, it would just add a lot more dynamic, um, you know, range to the photo. It would be a lot more interesting. Okay, can you show us an example of that then with some foreground in it? Yep, so here we have the same photo, but uh, all I did was I took a, a yellow flower plant on the left uh, <laughs> of the white flower plant. Buttercup. Oh, learn something new every day. <laughs> and I just bent it over slightly so it was in front of the camera, in between um, the flower that I was taking a photo of. Mm -hmm. So you still have your background here. Yeah. You still have your subject here. But now we've got this, we've got this, we've got this, 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 this. And all these little pops here are in the foreground, and it just makes it a more interesting and more complex photo composition. Okay, that makes sense. So think in 3D when you're taking photos. What's your next tip? Next tip is perspective. Oh, I like this photo. I like the contrast between the green and the bricks and the different patterns. I think this is pretty good. Yeah, I mean, it's not a bad photo. It's definitely the sort of photo a lot of us take when we're outside looking around. We see something and we think, ooh, that looks kind of cool. I'll take a photo of it. And we stand at normal height and we look directly at it and we take a flat photo. So instead of coming at it from the front, maybe we come at it from the side. And suddenly, the photo's a lot more dynamic. Okay, I get it now. So perspective is finding different ways of looking at the same thing. Absolutely. So it can be from the side like this. Um, it can be backwards Ooh, and really underneath like this. Yeah. Um, or it can be underneath and just sort of looking forwards in this way. And it just allows you to capture something that you might have seen a million other times um, in a new way. So get low get high, go to the side, just try something new. You know, it, it might be interesting to think to yourself, oh, what if I was a cat? What if I was a squirrel? What if I was a bug? What would the photo look like if I was taking it from those perspectives? That is a great tip. I really like that one. What's next then? The last tip is something called the rule of thirds. Okay, so thirds means splitting something into three, yes? Yep, and we're actually splitting it into nine. So we split it into three, left to right, top to bottom. Okay, let's see. Okay, um, interesting subject there. She looks a little shocked. She's right in the middle. That's what I normally do try and do when I'm taking a picture, get my subject slap bang in the middle. Is that a problem? It's not necessarily a problem, but it isn't necessarily ideal. So one thing we'll do real quick is we'll just cut the photo into uh, thirds, left to right, top to bottom, to follow that rule of thirds and just show what that looks like. So we've got sort of these. Oh, so it's like a knots and crosses board. Yeah. Yep. Or tic-tac-toe. And the one thing you notice right away is having the subject here in the center, your eyes are immediately drawn yeah. right to them. <laughs> And that's not necessarily a problem, especially if it's a portrait to go on social media or something. But the fact is, um, this isn't necessarily the most interesting composition because the way our brains work is when we see something right here in the middle like this, we go immediately to that. But because everything around it is so similar, this one looks so similar to this one, um, even though you, obviously there are differences, because it's symmetrical in that way, our brain sort of stops seeing all of this, and it just sees only this. 
And that again, that's not bad because you know what you have in here is pretty good. But it just means there's all this wasted space. And so you're not going to look at this photo for nearly as long. Okay, that makes sense. So can you show us an example of where it works? Absolutely. So here's the same uh, subject just shot in a slightly different way. Mm -hmm. And again, if we cut it up in the thirds, uh, left to right, top to bottom, what you'll find is we have taken the photo with the subject right here where these two lines meet. Um, and we've done that intentionally. Each one of these four meeting points uh, is sort of a point of interest, and that's where you want to place your most interesting things in the photo because, again, just the way our brains process visual information, most of the time we're going to go immediately right up here. But instead of staying right there, because this looks so different from, you know, all this other space over here, it's, it's not equal, it's not symmetrical in that way, our eyes go here, and then they go, ooh, is there something over here she's looking at? Oh, I wonder what's down there. Oh, I wonder what's up here. Oh, is that a squirrel? Oh, well, wow, look, it's the face again. And so <laughs> you can, you, you just dart around the photo a lot more. You spend more time looking at it. You have a more stimulating experience seeing it. Okay, so as a photographer, you're not just thinking about the subject that you're taking a picture of, you're also thinking about the people that will be looking at your photo afterwards and how they'll interact with it. Absolutely. Great, fantastic tips. Thanks very much. So there you have it, three great tips to take better photos. Do you have any tips as well that you'd like to share? If so, leave a comment below. Thanks for watching.